how I was able to make over $1.9 million on Fiverr. And in this video, I would like to go over the truth behind making money on Fiverr and what you should know before you really go all in into the Fiverr. First of all, I wanna show you one of my proofs here. And as you can see, I'm gonna currently refresh my analytics page so you can see up to date, I was able to make $1.9 million on Fiverr in the February, which I'm recording now. I was able to make 1.4. It's currently the first of the February and on my yearly, uh, progress here if we go to 2024 my January month has been over 40k so this is a fresh proof I'm not uh, a past seller I have been an active seller and uh, I want to disclose some of my insights about running your six and seven figure agency on Fiverr first of all uh, I mainly do social media marketing services. So my services primarily focuses on Instagram growth on creation of content on content management as well and I have a multiple gigs for that. And my experience on Fiverr has been, uh, I would say up and down. It's not always been as successful as you can see right now. There are always changes. There are always things that are happening on the platform. But what I learned from my experience, what I can tell you right away is that no matter what you do, if you do it on Fiverr, if you do it on your own, you always need to understand who you're trying to target, who are your customers. Because when you're watching these courses from all the gurus, all the experts, uh, you name it, you name, you, you know who I'm talking about, they will, under, they will tell you that, you know, a lot of positive things about running your agency, a lot of great, amazing things, the freedom, the money, the luxury and other things. And that's what I think, in my opinion, drives a lot of people to be able to run their agency. But then when people start to create their agency, start to do outreach, start to do service delivery, that's where a lot of issues are happening. And social media marketing agency owners, they are constantly talking about these struggles. At the end of the day, you need to really understand if it's for you or not. In my case here, when I run my services on Fiverr, uh, you really need to understand that Fiverr is has a specific type of buyers. And especially with the, all the changes that they're going into this year, with trying to push, if you have not noticed that, but Fiverr is trying to push the agencies. They're trying to attract higher buyers. They're trying to attract as well agencies who have a more complex operations rather than freelancers. And of course, over the last year or so, uh, Fiverr has been making updates regarding uh, their uh, marketplace that they wanna attract more pro freelancers and they really wanna try to uh, increase their sort of a trust level uh, among their buyers. And this year they're trying to uh, take another step for that. They're trying to attract agencies. They're trying to attract, again, you know, more serious buyers, corporations. But in my opinion, it's always a mixed result in the end because when Fiverr was first developed, it was not for higher end buyers. It was for people who are looking for cheap services. $5, that's how it, the name came, Fiverr, anything that you can buy from $5. And that back in 2000. 13 2014 when it just started eventually that was the trend and of course you attract a lot of freelancers from uh, overseas from other countries where let's say uh, making hundred dollars equals to making five thousand dollars let's say in the us right so it's became a very mixed marketplace and now we are in 2024 and there are a lot of freelancers who are making a living including myself fiverr is a full uh, time career for me, it's the main part of my income. And I'm always grateful for that because it gives me that opportunity. But at the same time, I would like to tell you that it's not for everyone. It's definitely not for everyone, especially when you're, you know, let's say already established, Fiverr might not be the best place for you. The reason behind it is you need to understand, first of all, when you are on the platform and when you establish yourself, of course, there are competition like everywhere. But the main thing with Fiverr is that you need to really understand their rules. You need to understand their concepts because there is always going to be, especially this year, they're introducing a new level system. So, for example, if we go to this page here, we're going to see that now we're going to have a scoring system where it's going to depend on your scores. You're going to have basically, um, you know, a, a different criteria, the review the review system is changing so at the end of the day i feel like a lot of 
uh, freelancers who are on Fiverr, they're really stressed out because of their, these rules. So these rules eventually make them think that, okay, I need to just be able to keep up my level, otherwise I will lose my business. And at the same time, they have another stress where the buyers are demanding, you know, on the revisions, on changes, on other things. So it could be, you know, stressful from both sides. I will suggest you know, if you're thinking to go on Fiverr, if you didn't have experience freelancing or running your uh, agency, or you just want to get it out there, I think it's definitely the best uh, decision that you can make because Fiverr will teach you how to, um, you know, communicate with customers because communication at the end of the day is the most important thing on Fiverr. That's how you can scale and grow successful business and establish yourself as an expert. Communication and then being able to follow the deadlines. Because when you run your agency, you might get a client and you're like, okay, I can start maybe tomorrow or I can take one you know, step at a time. I can be a bit more you know, uh, relaxed maybe in, in, some, in some ways, right? On Fiverr, you don't have this. On Fiverr, you have always strict deadlines. You have five days delivery that you need to complete. Otherwise, your uh, rating is gonna go down. So it's, you know, you need to comply with those rules and regulations all the time. If you're getting started, this might be a great because you will be learning a lot. You'll be learning how to manage your time. You'll be learning how to manage the expectation of the buyer. At the same time, you'll be able to go, go through the very important phase in your life and then eventually you'll be able to um, you know, establish yourself more as an expert and you'll have a lot more experience. So you can take Fiverr as a learning school. In my case, I started, well, we can go back to 2017, where my journey was uh, very successful, over $270,000 made on Fiverr this you know, incredible year. 2018 has been even more successful, almost 600,000. Uh, 2019 has been, um, a little bit different year because I had all, obviously my services have been affected by multiple changes on Instagram and other things. 2020, I quit Fiverr. I didn't sell any services. Then 2021, I came back still over $100,000, which is incredible. And then it started to slowly grow. And last year has been one of my, uh, I would say, great years where I was able to make over $300,000 on Fiverr. So it is possible when you look at my numbers, when you look at other freelancers, it's definitely possible to be successful to make six figures. But the question is, do you want to go through all of this regulations do you want to always be dependent on the search you know where you go for example to the your category and you start checking if you have been ranked high enough or not you always have to look at this and stress yourself or you have to always rely on this search if you ranked high enough or not because that's going to depend on if you're going to be getting more orders or not so that's question to you in my experience from what I have done on Fiverr and off Fiverr, you need to understand the best thing about Fiverr when you establish yourself as a you know leader, you will attract buyers to you. So they will be coming to you, they'll be sending you messages and they're gonna be ordering from you. That's always the best thing. But when you're starting your agency outside of Fiverr, for example, the first thing you need to do is to do outreach. You need to reach out to potential customers. You need to pitch them their services. But unfortunately, it becomes extremely difficult to close client that way. 99% of people are gonna be saying no or not even replying to you. And that could be, again, very stressful and very uh, demotivating at the same time. So what I will recommend for you is to go, uh, if you're just getting started and you think thinking, okay, what I should do in 2024, go and check out what other people doing because you will be surprised that a lot of people, you know, it doesn't need to be very complicated. You can start as simple as managing and posting content for clients. Yes, on Fiverr, you won't be able to charge a few thousand dollars for that because that's not the market for these types of services. The services are priced much lower. They could be priced anywhere from as five dollars although i don't recommend to go at that low but they can be priced let's say from fifty dollars from hundred dollars and you can go higher right for social media management service for example what we are um, doing in our agency here that we are charging let's say 174 uh, euros right so if i go back to uh, the currency let's change it to dollars to make it easier so um, we're charging, for example, from $180 and we're making nine posts and posting, right? And we have great demand. I mean, clients are coming back, clients are happy. And at the, at the end of the day, you know, this one gig brings a few thousand dollars per month, which means that you can 
quit your job that means you can um, you know be free on fiverr but then the question is what kind of clients you're getting on fiverr yes these clients are a little bit different because they probably had an experience with an agency before uh, outside of fiverr maybe it wasn't a good experience that's why they're coming on fiverr because they want to give it another shot but they're not ready to spend thousands of dollars but at the same time you might find a very interesting buyers i do have an incredible buyers who are spending every month a few hundred dollars sometimes could be close to a thousand dollars on a monthly basis and these types of clients they could be an agency they could be an established business but they just they are just are on fiverr that's not the majority of them but you can still get a good percentage of them that's why it is important to whatever you go to establish yourself professionally you need to showcase that you are doing something different and when i look at, at, at the other uh, for example services gigs you know I see that there's a crazy potential here because not many people, yes, I mean, they're showing case themselves, but they're still, you know, they're not really recording if the video uh, is, you know, some of them, for example, Albina here, she has a great video, uh, she, you know, professionally looking, but how often do they update those videos? Usually you don't really update them. It's maybe once a year, maybe once every two, three years, or maybe never. That's why when you take your uh, you know business more seriously like for example here Manuel he's also doing great right great video great engaging video but he can definitely improve and do it even better maybe something outside of the box you know maybe he has something more engaging that's why you know you need to look at this and see okay if someone doesn't have a video will the potential buyer will actually go and buy it probably less likely because um, you know it has a trust issues it has other factors that come in so that's why you know even when you look for example let's say this video would someone buy a service from this animated video yes of course but at the same time it's not going to be as powerful as when you are speaking and explaining what you will do so that's why uh, for me when i look at fiverr i understand that i won't be able to sell high ticket services there because i see agencies who are selling and we can go even here uh, ourselves we, together with you so let's check out um, let's go for example here in the customers actually we can go right here in, and browse the agency so this is something new that Fiverr has made they're trying to push agencies I don't know myself if I will go there because I prefer working with customers when they see my name even though I have uh, a team where I'm not alone of course but still I will rather people recognize me by my name by my personal brand and i think that's always the best because when you go as an agency you might change your agency name um, your agency name might not be as established or let's say you're not as you know very popular in the agency space so it's a bit tricky and i don't know how buyers going to be reacting for this because when they see agencies they might be uh, you know afraid or they might be thinking oh it's going to be too complicated for example we can take a look at SLT Consulting. Great agency, Sharon, she's running the agency. You know, she's been amazing. They have a lot of employers, they're very established. But let's just look at their number of reviews. They've been on Fiverr for a long time. And as you can see, of course, you know, when you price yourself uh, at, at 2,000, 2,000, 1,000, you know, very, very, very high, you won't be able to really get a consistent buyers as you can see here so she's getting um you know last order we don't know because we see only three months ago but maybe she got an order a month ago two months ago so it's not sustainable to offer services like this it can be good just as an additional way of you know showing yourself but if you just want to rely on fiverr you need to really find something different and the other example I want to show you, which I'm always inspired, uh, Luis Key, he's been uh, a, a very influential about Fiverr as well. He's been uh, talking a lot about success and Fiverr and his journey has been very inspiring because as you can see him, for example, he has this um, uh, logo gig, which he's doing 143 orders in queue, two days delivery. You can do the math and you can realize that he's probably in the hundreds of thousands of dollars per month on Fiverr, right? So I'm curious if he had hit the limit because you can withdraw $5,000 per day uh, and that makes it as 150,000, but who knows, right? So at the end of the day, this is what, um, this is what Fiverr is great about because it's able to bring you traffic on a daily basis. You don't need to hunt for customers when you establish yourself. This is why Fiverr is great. And this is why I think you should look into something like this because look at Luis, for example, he's getting tens, twenties or, or more uh, cl clients 
probably around 30 per day and this is incredible you have a large traffic which you're able to of course you know leverage and you're able to do multiple things because this traffic is buyers maybe you can cross sell them to your other services upsell them right this is how this is why Fiverr is exciting that's why I think you should you know look into those examples and Luis is not only one example in my case of course uh, I, we are also gaining 10 clients, 15 clients per day, right? Sometimes could be seven, sometimes could be five, but we're still generating a great traffic. And there are a lot of other sellers who are doing the same. You just need to find that sort of a, uh, a per, let's say perfect uh, service that you can offer. And at the end of the day, you will be surprised how you can grow and scale your journey. So again, I'm telling you this story from my observation, from uh, you know a real example that you know I'm still going to be present on Fiverr in 2024. I would like to continue and scaling my journey because I have a great service for that. The service is not a high ticket service; it's a medium ticket. But at the same time, I'm also more motivated to uh, go outside of Fiverr and establish my brand there and be able to attract customers that way. You need to understand that it's not always about outreach. It doesn't mean that you need to be outreaching if you're running your agency outside of Fiverr. You need to be establishing the brand. The same on Fiverr, you establish your brand by having reviews, by having professional video, by having, uh, you know, um, yourself as well like you know Luis you can see he's a person I mean you know it's it's obviously here he explains who he is uh, you know he has a great branding as well and that's how he attracts people the same time when you grow yourself on social media right when you establish yourself as an expert as a let's say logo designer or as a marketer and you're cost constantly posting content talking about different uh, valuable uh, tips strategies and you will be attracting those potential buyers you'll be attracting those leads that's that's what you want to focus you don't want to be doing everyday outreach and just be like another type of person who will be outreaching and promising results and promising sales because at the end of the day it's not sustainable and you should not base your services around your uh, let's say performance around the sales no the buyers they're not buying because of they just want to see the results at the end of the day each business is different and the results are different some results could be shorter term some results could be longer term but if we speak in generally about marketing the results always takes time they take few months maybe a year but it's important to show that path to your buyer and that buyer will trust you and trust your process and trust your methodology as well so guys i wanted to just you know briefly show you that 2024 is still going to be a great year no matter what fiverr does changes because the great thing about those changes is that when something happens maybe not in the uh, preference of the sellers the seller is going to go hard at fiverr they're going to go hard in the forum in other places so i'm sure fiverr will be listening to them and readjusting things but at the end of the day as you can see the fiverr is trying to go into this more a higher end more a quality checks for sellers and more uh, like a higher end experience for the buyers as well thank you so much and please don't forget if you go to my freelance hustle website this is my newsletter i do start to share my progress uh, on a weekly basis and also share my thoughts insights and other things so feel free to join it once you join it or if you receive a newsletter I always try to include a coupon for my course which is free in this case if you're subscribed and you can watch out this course it's over 12 hours great information I've been updating it recently and I'm excited to update you more with some information so feel free to check it out and happy to see you there as well.